What are your takeaways from the headlines out of this call? It sounds like tensions were calmed rather than inflamed. I think that's right, Emily. The important thing was having the call. Uh, the U.S.-China relationship is so contentious. Uh, tensions are running so high that there are few members of the two governments who can talk and put, um, have frank conversation, raise issues in a constructive way. The two presidents can. They have a longstanding relationship. And unfortunately, um, the state of the relationship in some ways rests on them continuing as they did today for the fifth time since President Biden has been in office just to level set the relationship, frankly exchange views on areas where they fundamentally disagree and are continuing to work at cross purposes, but always raising the very important point that confrontation should not veer into the military zone. Mm -hmm. Competition is fine, disagreements are fine, and can be managed as long as they don't actually explode over a crisis like on Taiwan. Well, now you have House Speaker Nancy Pelosi seemingly determined to visit Taiwan, and obviously the Chinese government has strongly expressed their disapproval of this visit. I mean, is this a good idea? What are the consequences going to be if she indeed goes through with this trip? Well, it's not unprecedented that the Speaker of the House uh, visits Taiwan. That happened 25 years ago. Newt Gingrich did so. But of course, the U.S.-China relationship was in a very different place 25 years ago. And so that's right. The timing of the visit is particularly challenging because uh, here in Washington, we continue to, to ramp up areas of competition with China. We continue to complain about bad Chinese behavior, including more and more aggressive and assertive actions vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan. And so in Beijing, there's a view that this visit is a provocation to demonstrate more official support for the government. And of course, it's three months before China is having a major leadership meeting. And so what continues to be stressed is that exactly as you said, Emily, the timing is bad for Speaker Pelosi to be going right now. That doesn't mean she won't go. It doesn't mean it's going to lead to a disaster. But indeed, the Chinese government has been vociferous in saying there could be consequences for her taking that action. At the same time, you've got this $280 billion uh, manufacturing bill that would bring chip production to the United States and a broader deglobalization trend that I'm sure China can't be happy with. How does that play into this? Well, in fact, um, the omnibus uh, China bill was stopped in Congress. And so the bill that you just mentioned, the Chips Plus Science bill, is only one small part of that larger China bill. And so um, that the elements of the bill, of course, reinforcing and invigorating the ability of the United States to manufacture semiconductor chips, conduct R&D here in the United States through funding from the government, are all meant to enhance competitiveness with China. But they're not, what's not in the bill are some of those provisions that we're going to seek to earlier um, uh, have the delisting of Chinese uh, uh, companies from American stock exchanges if China didn't comply with these audit rules that they've been dragging their feet on, and a potential outbound investment screening process. So this bill is actually very targeted just on American competition with China and not on constraining American engagement with China. I think the Chinese government, although they wouldn't want to say it this way, is probably a little relieved this is what was passed by the House today mm -hmm. after the Senate vote. Interesting. Last quick question. Obviously, we're, we're seeing now Alibaba move uh, to this Hong Kong listing. SEC Chair Gary Gensler says a U.S.-China deal needs to happen so more of these delistings don't happen. Is a deal an, a possibility? It's absolutely a possibility. The two sides continue to work very much at it. I think there's certainly posturing by both uh, the SEC and 
and uh, the Chinese CSRC on what they want. Uh, the Chinese want some exceptions from across the board requirements that all Chinese listed companies face um, audit inspections by the U.S. The U.S. is holding firm, saying you've had that exception for much too long. We want you to comply. I think okay. the, the talk about it not happening is a little bit too quick. There's still hope there. 